Hello everyone, my name is Magnus Madsen from Aarhus University, and today I'll tell you about fixed points for the masses programming with first-class data log constraints. This is joint work with Andre Lotak from the University of Waterloo. So let us begin by talking about data log. So data log is a simple but powerful logic programming language. And data log programs have several interesting properties. So any data log program you can write eventually terminates, and when it does, it does with a unique solution called the minimal model. And there are many efficient and parallel evaluation strategies for data log. And finally, any polynomial time algorithm can be expressed in data log. So with all these properties, you would think that use of data log would be more widespread, but that is not yet the case. We think there are two major causes. So one is the lack of integration into general purpose programming languages. And the second is a lack of mechanisms to construct modular data log programs. So let me illustrate by an example. Let's say we have the following uh, data log program that encodes some facts about ancient Romans. So specifically, we have these parent of facts that is encoding, for example, that the parent of Pompeii was Strabo. Now, if we wanted to compute ancestry, we could add uh, two data log rules saying here that if the parent of X is Y, then we conclude that the ancestor of X is Y. And similarly, if the ancestor of X is Y and the ancestor of Y is Z, we conclude the ancestor of X is set. So this is computing uh, the transitive closure of the parent of relation. Now, if you take this program together, so the facts and the rules, then the solution, which we call the minimum model, would, for example, contain the fact that Sextus, the ancestor of Sextus was Strabo. So the grandfather of Sextus was Strabo. So this is all very fine. However, in ancient Rome, Lineage did not only consider a uh, blood, but also adoptions. So, for example, famously, uh, Augustus was adopted by Caesar and Tiberius was adopted by Augustus. So we may want our program to take this into account. Fortunately, we can do this easily by just adding a rule to the data log program. So just add a rule that includes adoptions in the ancestor of relation and everything works as expected. We are now computing ancestry, both based on blood and based on adoptions. However, we now have two programs. We have one with biological parents and we have one with biological parents and adoptions. So what if we wanted to maintain and develop both of these programs? Well, we could have uh, separate copies, so separate files, but then if we find a bug in one, well, we have to go and fix it in both. So we have the multiple maintenance problem. Uh, we could uh, try to textually generate them. So write, let's say a Java program and output the programs from that. But how can we be sure that the generated programs are correct? And what is the expressive power of doing this? We could also try some kind of meta programming. So maybe we use the C preprocessor to write some macros that uh, generate these programs. So that might be slightly more uh, sophisticated than using Java, but still there are concerns about correctness and expressive power. So the main idea in our work is that data log programs should be first class values inside a functional programming language. And so in our implementation, we can solve this problem with the true programs as follows. So I'll write uh, two functions here, heritage and ancestors. And heritage is going to encapsulate the true programs. So it's going to take a Boolean, uh, whether to include adoptions, and it's going to return a data log program. I haven't written the exact type here. I have a local variable here, P1, that contains the uh, rules for uh, biological parents. And I have a local variable P2 here that contains the rules for adoption. And then depending on this Boolean, either I'm going to return the original program, or I'm going to return the original program plus the rule that accounts for adoptions. So the union of the two programs. Now down here in this function, I also take a Boolean. I call some functions to get all the parent facts from somewhere, maybe from a file, whatever. The same for the adoptions. And then I'm going to take the facts and I'm going to co compose them with the result of calling this heritage function, which will give me one of the two versions of the program. I'm going to solve that to compute its minimal model, and then I'm going to project out all the ancestor of uh, facts. So in this way, I have now, using a functional program with embedded data log, been able to um, model uh, both programs and have them um, in, in one program at the same time. Okay, so the example illustrates uh, several properties of our system. So the first is that uh, data log uh, constraints are first class values that can be passed around. 
The second is that deadlock con constraints can be composed with other deadlock constraints to form larger programs. And the third is that we preserve sort of the essence of data log. So the constraints are declarative, they look like ordinary data log clauses, and they can be solved using standard techniques. Okay, let's consider for a moment uh, such a language. Could anything go wrong? So here I have uh, some local variable G, and I have some road flags here. For example, saying maybe there's a road from Paris to Lyon, and maybe um, the speed limit is 110. Then down here, I have Q1, which contains this data log uh, uh, program value that is comp computing the transitive closure of these road facts. And here I have Q2, which is also computing some kind of transitive closure, but here taking into account the, the, the weather, which should not be icy. And here icy is actually some function in the functional language I'm calling. Okay, now the question is, is it okay to take this data log program and compose it with uh, this program here? And it's okay to take this data log program and compose it with this program here. In both cases, the answer is no, because if we consider uh, G, we can see that road facts have three arguments, but down here, there's an assumption that road facts only have two arguments. So the composition of these two programs makes no sense. Similarly here, we can see that here, uh, roads do take, road facts do take three arguments, but calling this IC function, there's assumption that this is uh, the weather, which should be a string apparently, but here we can see it's an integer. So this composition here is also uh, meaningless. So what we want is to have a type system that can ensure that such programs are rejected so that we can be sure that if a program is well typed, it will not get stuck at runtime. Okay, so what we've done in this work is that we have formalized a minimal lambda calculus with data log constraints. Uh, we've defined an operational semantics and we extend data log semantics in two small ways. So one is we allow something called guard expressions and we allow general expressions as head terms. Now these extensions allow you to express more than you can do in ordinary data log, but sometimes at the cost of decidability. But if you choose not to use them, then you preserve all the nice properties about data log. Now to model the data log solver, uh, we've modeled it as a non-deterministic black box. And so the idea is that we don't want to tie us to a specific evaluation strategy, we want people to be able to use the calculus, but sort of sub in their own uh, solver. So what we've modeled the solver as doing is, is the two essential operations we think of any solver, which is rule selection and rule instantiation. So under some very mild conditions about how these work, we, we've proved uh, type safety. And so the type system we've presented for this uh, semantics is a Hindley Miller style type system. And uh, to type these first class data log constraints, or to be precise, the predicates, uh, we use a row polymorphism, and I'll show you in a minute how it works. And being an instance of Hilly Miller, our system supports uh, type inference. So even though these types can get complicated, we don't have to write them. And with this type system, we've proved the, proved the user properties, so, so progress and preservation means the system is sound. Finally, um, in data log, there's a notion of uh, stratified negation and we have proposed an algorithm that can determine at compile time whether an expression in this calculus is stratified. So I'll also get back to that. Okay, so this is the calculus. I don't want to go into detail, I just want to show you and to sort of highlight that the calculus consists of the lambda calculus. Then we have data log constraints here uh, embedded as first class values. And finally, we have some operations on these uh, data log constraint values. So for example, composing them, solving them, um, taking out, asking if one set of facts is a subset of, an of another and projecting out uh, certain predicates. And here's the type system. Again, I don't want to go into details. I just want to point out that it's a polymorphic type system and we have uh, row types. And in the row types, the order of predicates do not matter. So we introduce um, uh, this type equivalence on row types. And so I'll also make that clear in a moment. So let me just illustrate by example how this system sort of intuitively works. So let's say we have this small program here. I have uh, three local variables. P1 is this uh, edge fact, P2 is this path fact, and P3 is the composition of the two. And so I'll show that this program is well typed and I'll be using uh, these three type rules here. So the type of a P1 after uh, uh, let generalization is going to be uh, uh, this here. So it's saying that 
The edge predicate is something where the terms must have type string and string, and then it's polymorphic in other predicate symbols. So it means it can be composed with other predicate symbols. Uh, the same is true for uh, P2, except now it's talking about the path predicate. So these are the types assigned to P1 and P2. Now what I can do is that down here in the composition where I have P1 and P2, I can use the uh, tvar rule to instantiate these two row types. And I'll do them the following way. In, in P1, what is missing is path. So I'll instantiate path with string and string, and then some uh, new variable R3. And for R2, I will instantiate it with edge and, and R3. So in other words, P1 and P2 are going to get instantiated to these types. And so what you can see here is that these types are uh, almost the same. It's only the order of predicates. But as I explained on the previous slide, we have a type equivalence that allows us to uh, reorder predicate symbols in such a row up to distinct uh, names. So this allows me now to uh, use the t-compose rule to say to, to compute the type of this. And the type of P3 then, after generalization, will be this row type here. So it's a data lock program where the edge predicates as terms are string and string, and same for path. And then it's polymorphic in R3, so it can be combined with other predicates which are not edge or path. Okay. So an important aspect of data lock is negation. So a lot of expressive power in data lock comes from negation. So just to briefly explain what this is about, I might have a data lock program like this, where I say, um, well, a husband X is a man who is married whereas a bachelor is a man who is not a husband. So this data lock program is a legal stratified data lock program. And the reason is when we construct the dependency graph, also called the precedence graph shown here, there are no cycles with a negative edge. It's also sometimes expressed as there's no uh, recursion through negation. So um, the takeaway is that such a program is legal and it has a well-defined meaning and a minimal model. However, some programs using negation, like this one, are not stratified and do not have any meaningful uh, solution. So in this case, I changed the program uh, slightly here. I now have a precedence graph that looks like this. And here there is a cycle between these predicate symbols. And so such programs have no meaning. And so we want to, we want to reject them. Now, for an ordinary data log program, rejecting such programs is easy. You can just build this graph by look, looking at the syntax of the program. And then you can see, well, if there is such a cycle, I report an error to the user, and I can even report the cycle. Now, in Lambda Dead, the situation is more complicated because we don't have the program at compile time. What we have is a Lambda expression that is constructing these programs at runtime. So how can we be sure that such, uh, such constructed programs uh, are actually stratified. And so what we propose is the following algorithm. So we assume we have the entire lambda dead program. So we are going to take all the constraints in that program, regardless of where they occur. So we have all the constraints. We're going to build the dependency graph or the precedence graph for all of these constraints. And then the key idea is that we look at every expression that has some row type. In the row type, there will be some predicates that give types to the terms. And the point is that if a predicate does not occur in the row type, then the expression cannot evaluate to a data log program with that predicate. And that allows us to only consider the parts of D where both uh, A and B occur in the row type. So in other words, we can take this global dependency graph and we can use it, reduce it to a smaller dependency graph. And then we check whether that dependency graph is stratified and compute its stratification. Now, I just want to point out there's a huge design space for different ways of, do of doing this. Um, but this is sort of our first attempt at solving this problem. OK, so we have formalized the system of improving its soundness, but we have also implemented it in the Flix programming language. So Flix is a functional imperative and logic programming language. It has many of the usual features of a functional programming language. The compiler is about 60,000 lines of code, and our extension required about 5,000 lines. So while this was a lot of work, it was not too difficult because our system fits really well into Henley Milner. So while we had to make many changes, it didn't require large restructurings. And our implementation is open source. You can go download it and play with it. Okay, so to evaluate this work, 
we considered uh, four case studies. So the first three are things we've implemented. So I'll just briefly talk about them. So uh, one was uh, these cones, so collections of small programs that show that data log programs and functional programs uh, work well together. Then Puppet Master, which was an actor library or is an actor library, where the startup shutdown and, and actor supervision policies are expressed as data log constraints. And then a Python analysis where we can configure sort of the precision of the analysis by selective inclusion and, and exclusion of rules, and we can tune the context sensitivity. Finally, we considered a dupe, which is a large scale data log uh, program to see how they deal with this parametricity problem. So I'll just briefly show uh, 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 one of these cones. So this cone here, we are given a list of graphs and we want to find graphs whose union is acyclic. And so the idea is that we can define a function is cyclic here using a small data log fragment. And so this data log fragment computes if there the transitive closure of the graph and then it computes uh, says that it's cyclic if there is a path from a node to itself. So this is expressed in data log. And then down here, we're given a list of graphs. Then we use group by on lists. So given two graphs, we compose them and we ask if it's not acyclic. For this dupe framework, which is this huge data log development, uh, we looked at the source code and we found many examples of selective rule inclusion where the C preprocessor is used to include or exclude rules. So for example, here we can see, well, if this flag is set, then uh, the program has this rule, otherwise it has uh, this rule. So this shows there really is a need for a technique like this. Okay, finally, I just wanna say like there's a, a website for the programming language uh, with our implementation you can go look at. Uh, there's a Visual Studio Cloud plugin you can use. And in summary, we have proposed data log programs as first case values in a function language. Uh, we have formalized our system in a minimal calculus. We presented a type system, proved its correctness. We present an algorithm to determine uh, whether an expression is stratified. We think our technique solves a use, uh, useful problem and it's uh, freely available and ready for use.